Welcome everyone to the latest Coffee Break webinar by RIB Costex. My name is Francesca Nottingham and I'm a Costex consultant in RIB Software. As you can see on screen, this month's topic is use of zones. Within Costex, you can create different zones for use when you're completing your takeoffs. In this video, we're going to be looking at how this can assist you and when or where you can use this feature to your advantage. For those of you who don't know what Costex is, or for those who have never used it, Costex is a fully integrated measuring and estimating solution with universal applications, supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, DWGs, all the way through to 3D models, BIM files, and everything in between. As we can see from this matrix, RIB Costex is available in a variety of licenses, ranging from offering all functionality to a fairly limited option, depending on your estimating requirements. Delving deeper into each functionality, let's look at the components, breaking down how each of them are cohesive with one another, bringing you an all-in-one service. You have your takeoff options to start with, whether you're using 3D BIM or 2D drawings, Costex provides accurate data, enabling you to utilize this data within your workbook. So our workbooks are just like Excel spreadsheets, but they are our own version. They still have the ability to use formulas and functions, making them very easy to navigate and use. We then have revisions tracking. Now this offers an accurate method of comparing a previous revision with a new one, giving you multiple ways to highlight, identify and quantify any changes, meaning you're always up to date with the latest cost implications. Once you've completed your estimate, you then have the opportunity to produce a report. Now we offer various standard report templates for you to use. Alternatively, you can customize your own report producing a professional and quality output. Don't forget to check out our previous webinar where we discuss how to merge buildings. You can find this via the link on screen or by visiting RIB Costex YouTube channel where we upload our coffee break webinars and you can also subscribe so you can get notified of the latest videos and kept up to date with the newest features and how to videos. So this month's webinar, as previously mentioned, we will be demonstrating the use of zones. Firstly, let's talk about what zones are. Zones allow the capturing of measurements against specific attributes such as floor level, function area or the stage of construction. Zones are grouped by zone categories. For example, Tower A, Tower B and Car Park may be grouped into one category, while Ground Level, Levels 1 to 20 and Levels 21 to 30 are grouped into another. Each dimension can be associated with up to eight different zone categories at the same time. Zones essentially provide the ability to categorize dimensions and can act as a filter, allowing you to analyze data for a specified area of interest. By using multiple zone categories, analysis of measured quantities or cost estimates by multiple parameters can be conducted. An example of when we would use them would be if perhaps you have to measure the interior fit out of a building and you want to divide the building up into different finishes. You might have a few areas which require hard flooring and others carpeted areas. You may have rooms which are tiled and others not. So you can use zones to allocate where these costs and measurements go. Can they be used in dimension view and workbook view? Yes, they can. The beauty of this is that you can allocate your measures to zones in the dimension view and then you can pull across the information into the workbook based on the information from the zone that you have chosen. We will be demonstrating this in this video. A couple of things to note as we go along, so you don't always have to allocate a zone. You can have standard zones or completely customized zones, and you can amend the properties of a zone once it's been created. So let's take a look at how to use zones. So something that we have mentioned in the presentation is how you would go about setting up your zones. I mentioned that you can either set these up as standard or you can actually generate these on the fly. It all depends on how you work and what type of construction you're dealing with. For example, you might work in the type of sector where you are building the same or very similar buildings and you can utilise the same zones or zone categories each time. You may be volume house building and have recurrent house types. If this is the case, it would be advantageous for you to set up standard zones and use these each time. If you work in a sector where each project is different or varying in specification, then you can set zones up on the fly as and when you need them or as they occur. What I can show you now is how you would set up standard zones. So you just need to go to your system administration. So if you're an experienced Costex user, you will know that you can access this one of two ways. The first being to go to your file tab or backstage view and then select system administration. From here, you would choose your measurement tab and then you'd go to standard zones. 
Alternatively, you can go to the Home tab and select System Administration from here, and then ultimately Standard Zones, taking you to the same window. So here you can see I've got my Zone Category 1 already set up in my Standard Zones. Um, this is just split into two different ones, so New Construction or Existing. Um, and to add a new one, you just press Insert and then put your details in here, ultimately adding it to your System Admin. Now, if you're in a situation where you're creating zones on the fly, you would do this slightly differently. So you'd go to your dimensions tab and then you would select edit zones. And then here you could create your zones as per the project that you're working on. So for example, in this one, I've created a project section. So zone category one, which as you can see, I've got BC, which is building costs. Um, this is any items under this zone will be what I refer to as measured works. So I also have site costs. So uh, here is anything to do with site before the actual building of construction takes place, like demolition or site clearance, for example. And then we have others here like prelims and clarifications, etc. And um, so that's what I've set up as my zone category one. So now what I'd like to do is set up zone category two. So you can actually have eight in total. So you just go to insert, go to this drop down and you can see I can choose from eight different zone categories. So here I'm going to put in zone category two um, I'm going to give it a name. I'm actually going to divide my rooms up by floor finishes. Um, so I've got some areas of the building which are carpeted. I've got some which are timber or hardwood flooring um, and I've got others which are tiled um, in sort of various places on the floor plan. So I'd like those divided up. So I'm going to put my zone name, well, the first one is going to be carpeted flooring. So I'm just going to type that in. Um, and then you do need to put a description. It can be exactly the same as your zone name, or it can be a bit more detailed. So in my description, I'm just going to put um, carpeted floor tiles. Just in case anyone's wondering the specification. Um, and then here I also have the opportunity to add zones uh, from standard zones. So because I'm creating this on the fly, I'm going to leave that as it is and press insert. And now you can see I've got a new zone category and the first one is carpeted flooring where I've got carpeted floor tiles. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my other two types of flooring. So I'm just going to enter those in. So once you've done that, um, you could then also add a new zone category and continue to add specific zones for this project. So there are actually no rules as to what you can use. So you could have zone category three as wall finishes. You could have another zone category for whether something is in the substructure phase or superstructure phase, or you could have a zone category that determines which areas are exterior or which are interior or which floors or story something is on. The possibilities are endless. You can just use it exactly how you require. So once you've created your zones, you can actually go back in and edit them. So for example, I would like to give zone category two a name. I want to call it floor finishes so that I know what that zone category relates to. So I can just click on edit um, and I'm going to put in the description of floor finishes and then OK. And then equally, if I wanted to go into these, I would either just double click to edit it uh, or again, press edit over here. So something important to note here um, with your zone properties is a required tick box. So if I double click onto my zone category, um, I've obviously just typed in my description, but there is also this required tick box. Now, if you have this selected, it means that before you do a takeoff, you have to have a zone category selected in order for Costex to know where to place the measurement. This is helpful if you're keen to make sure every measurement is in a zone and it can assist with making sure that you have measured everything. If you leave it unticked, there is a possibility that you may miss a measurement. However, if left unticked, it allows you a bit more flexibility in where something is placed after it is measured. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if I click on required, and then come out of this and try and do a measurement where my zone categories are left blank, it would not let me perform that takeoff. So let's try and do a takeoff. So if I go to do a takeoff now, hopefully you can see up here in zone category one, I've put this in my build costs, but in zone category two, I've left it blank. 
so I could choose from any of the zones that I just created. I'm going to leave it blank and let's watch what we do if we tried to do a takeoff. So remember I clicked my required box which means that I need to have selected my zone category in order for it to uh, understand the quantity. So let's go into my rooms um, and I know that my conference rooms have not been measured so let's go into one of my conference rooms and try and measure. So it says unable to add dimension zone category two must not be blank and I have to say okay and then come out of this and then I would need to select which zone category it goes into. Once I've done that it will then let me and it's taken that quantity and put it over into my dimension group. Now let's go back into our zones, edit them, and then I'm gonna take off that required field and then come out of this. So I've now got the flexibility, uh, even if this is blank, to actually measure. Um, and there is a way in which to select the zone after you've actually done your measure. So Something else that we can do is uh, instead of assigning a zone each time, you can actually assign a zone to a drawing. All you would need to do is go into your drawing properties and then you can select from here which zone you would like to pin this to. So if I am confident that everything in my ground floor, for example, is to do with my build costs and everything in here is um, carpeted flooring, for example, I could select that. Um, update it and then any measure would just fall into that zone. This would be particularly beneficial if for example one of your zone categories was your floor level or your story so you could have zone category three set as uh, level one or floor one or first floor whatever you've called your zones um, and then you could assign that to that drawing um, so when you pull across your information you know which floor it's coming from. So let's come out of this and actually start assigning zones. So multiple ways in which you can do this. I've already shown you one way um, in which you can use the filter bars or drop down menus up here to select which zones they go in. Um, alternatively, when you've set something as a zone, then you can actually change it. So if I hover over this, you can see my zone category one is building costs and my zone category two is carpeted flooring. What I can actually do is right click on this area and say modify dimensions and then change zone. So if for whatever reason this was now hardwood flooring instead, I can select hardwood flooring, okay. And now when I hover over it, it's changed into a different zone. Now I'm gonna change this back because I know that is actually a carpeted area. So let's modify again, go back to carpeted, okay. Um, and now let's measure the rest of our conference rooms with the same zone. Now, if you know that your next few takeoffs are going to be in the same zone, rather than going into each one individually and editing them, um, you can actually just adjust it up here. Um, let's change it to hardwood flooring. So, for example, I know that all my communal areas are going to be hardwood flooring. Um, so let's go into that dimension group and measure these. So I'm just going to check my overlaps here to see if anything's been measured twice. So I can see this has actually been measured twice. So if I zoom in, I can see that needs to be in the foyer. So let's just use our N key to get rid of the corridor. But I know that um, it does need to be hardwood flooring. So I'm going to right click here. And then I'm going to modify my dimensions, change zone, and then keep it as hardwood flooring. So now I just need to assign my tiled flooring. So I know there's a couple of uh, sort of bathroomy areas or WC areas which will require tiled flooring. So I know down here I've got a men's and a women's WC. So I'm going to measure these go into the dimension group so there's women for example 
that's already been measured uh, but it's not in the correct zone category so I'm going to right click and modify dimensions change zone and say tiled areas okay same with men Now, what you can also do um, once you're happy with where you've assigned everything um, is you can go into your dimensions tab here and you can actually filter this um, so that you can see exactly which zone has been assigned to what. So let's just make sure that our zone category two is selected. Let's get rid of unknown. Um, and let's find more general folder go into dimensions so if you open these you can actually see where they've been assigned we can see here that all my conference rooms have got carpeted flooring um you can see that my corridor has got hardwood flooring um you'll see that the foyer has as well and then just by going down the list, you can see what's been assigned and what hasn't just to make sure that you haven't missed anything um, and everything's been assigned. So when you pull it across to your workbook, then you know um, that you're not going to be missing any information. So as well as missing information, it can also show you if you've misassigned anything um, and you can correct it at this stage. Once you're satisfied with where you have assigned your zones, you can now take this information to your workbook. So let's go to our workbook view. So now I'm going to go to my floor finishes section and I've got a couple of quantities here which I need to populate. So what I can do is pull across um, costs from certain areas. So here I've got a description of carpet um, which I can pull across my carpeted areas. So what I would need to do is just go to my conference room and I can pull that over pull it across and what I can do now is just select which zones the quantities are coming from. So I'm going to say carpeted flooring, pull that across and it's now adjusted the value to exactly what has been assigned to the carpeted flooring. So I can update that and that's now live linked to any zone that's got been assigned to carpeted flooring. I'm now going to do the same thing for my tiling. So I'm going to go to my uh, men and women for example if I go down a level I can actually pull both across so let's go women first so in category two tiled area update and then let's go men as well update Okay, so I'm going to do my hard flooring so I know there's a couple of areas here. So if I go down a level and pull across my corridor as well as my foyer, pull these across. And I want these to be just the hardwood areas. Okay, go back up and now I've got a combined total there. What you can also do is filter so you can actually pull across items from a filtered category over here so for example if you wanted everything in your uh, build costs and you wanted everything in your carpeted flooring for example it knows exactly what dimension group that comes from so you can just filter rather than looking through each individual dimension group and equally it would pick up my hardwood flooring um, as well as my tiled areas so that is also another way in which to pull across the information so this concludes the coffee break webinar on the use of zones i hope you found this useful and it's given you a better understanding of when we would use zones and how they can assist you with costing and sorting items please feel free to like this video as well as leave any comments if you have any questions you can also subscribe to our channel allowing you first look access to our videos on tips and tricks on how best to use costex